uh, Wayne Bennett, public, publisher of the Field Negro .com, and um, here at the 4040 Club in New York, celebrating uh, Black Blogger Month uh, with uh, BlackEnterprise.com. Whose responsibility is it to make sure that the average Joe is aware of politics? Is it the person or the community? Um, it's a combination, but I think the community does have an obligation to put the word out. Um, politics is not a very sexy thing, so the average Joe is not going to be engaged in the political process. So as bloggers and people in the new media, we have an obligation, I think, as well as the individual to put these things in front of them and make them understand what's going on in the world of politics. What are the challenges of having a, a, an opinionated blog and being in a, a conservative 9 to 5 job? Um, it's very challenging, especially when uh, you have to bite your tongue with certain things that you want to write or you want to say um, because you're in the back of your mind you're aware of um, certain things that could affect your job or certain professional responsibilities that you have that comes with your job. So it is very challenging, but at the same time, you try to find ways to say what you want to say and be opinionated or quote someone else and get that message out there by, um, you know, by separating the two. Where would America be if it were not for the contributions of African Americans and other people of color? Um, it wouldn't be America. It wouldn't be, we certainly would not be the country that we are um, today. There's a reason that, you know, that's that there's, there's that sign on the um, Statue of Liberty about bringing the huddled masses and um, all these immigrants that came to this country really built it and going back to immigrants or people who came to this country forcefully um, the African Americans really built it as slaves as well so America would not be the country it is not only economically it would not be as economically viable um, but it would not have this great ideal and this great constitution and this great um, ideal as a country and as a republic that the rest of the world looks up to if we did not embrace this kind of diversity that we have now and didn't tolerate all peoples from all over the world. When did I realize there was a future for me in blogging? When I, I got a call from a gentleman who was a, a writer for the LA Times, he wanted to basically follow me around for two days at my job at home. And I said, well, what, why would you want to do this? He said, well, my wife read your blog and she fell in love with it. And uh, my name is Richard Fawcett and I write for the LA Times. And I just wanted to do a feature on your, your blog. I did not realize that African Americans were so involved with blogging because on my blog I had a sidebar with all African American blogs so um, that's when I realized the potential of blogging and social media and um, after that it just you know kind of took off from there. Why is it important for our people to know the power of their voice? I think it's important because um, as African Americans we always feel disenfranchised especially when it comes to uh, the mainstream media and the, um, the powerful media conglomerates in this country. So I think as bloggers and people in the social media and new media, we have an obligation to put the word out there about issues that affect our community and to let our community know that their voice is important and that they do have a voice somewhere other than the mainstream media. And I think the more we do that, um, there's strength in numbers. If more bloggers coil us around single issues such as Jaina Six, Trevon Martin, if we coil us around issues and make those issues powerful enough, the mainstream media will have to pick up on them. So it's important to give our communities a voice um, through new media and through um, uh, online media. How did I come up with the name of Feel Negro? I get asked that a lot because it's somewhat controversial. I took it from a speech by, um, a famous speech by Malcolm X um, in the early 60s where he talked about the dichotomy within the African American community between house Negroes and field Negroes. And he was basically trying to make a point that the masses, people, are the people in the fields and not the people in the house. So in order to give the masses a voice, you have to um, embrace the field Negro and not necessarily the house Negro. And the field Negro works hard, which is what I tried with my blog. Field Negro is persistent, which is what I try to do. And I try to represent the masses because I feel that it's the masses in this country that are being underserved and um, you know are suffering the most economically and socially. So the field Negro kind of represents how I feel or where I put myself in that debate um, as a feeling or someone who relates to the feeling.